Hello, everyone. Thank you once again for joining us. Today, we want to look at equilibrium of rigid bodies. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and leave comments and suggestions at the comment session as well. As I said, we are looking at equilibrium of rigid bodies under our series on basic mechanics. Let's look at our question today and how to go about it. The bracket BCD is hinged at C and a cable is used to support the bracket at B. Determine A, the tension in the cable, B, the reactions at C. So this is our diagram. Let's see how we solve this problem. Good. We said that anytime you are given a question on equilibrium, the first thing you need to do is to draw a free body diagram. And the first step in drawing the free body diagram is to detach the body of interest from all other bodies. So you can see that in our diagram here, we are asked to determine the forces are acting on a bracket. So we need to detach all this as our point of interest and draw a free body diagram like this. So this is point C. And at point C, we said that there is a pin support. There is a pin or hinge support. And we are told that anytime you have a hinge support, it means that there are two forces. It will restrict motion in the X. We have CX, and it will also restrict motion in the Y. So we have CY. And this is where we have the 300 Newton force. So 300 Newtons at this side. We have 1,000. 150 newtons. And then this side, we have a horizontal force which is 15 newtons. And then we have a cable pointing. This is a cable. So we said that cables always point away from our point of interest. Here, yeah, this is our point of interest. We have the cable pointing away like that. From A to C, from B to C. So the tension in this table will be T, T, A, T, B, A. So from this free body diagram, which you have drawn, you know that the distance from this to that is 0 0.6, the distance from this to that is 0 0.5, and the distance from where we have our cable, from where we have our cable is 0 0.3. And then the distance from this point to that point, we are to that is 0 0.6. So we have drawn our free body diagram for the structure. But now this cable here, you can see that it's not in the X and it's not in the Y. So we said that we need to resolve so if you want to get to this point, you are going to resolve, you get one force here. Let me change my marker so that you see it very clearly. You can see that if you resolve that force, you are going to get one in this direction like this, and another one in this direction like that. You can see that can be, you can complete that. You can see that the Y will be coming down and the S will be going this direction. And if S, if this is going this direction, it means that it's going to be negative. And if this is going that direction also, it means that it's going to be negative. So our X and Y are going to be negative for that force. So first of all, you can see that now 
we we don't know the first year TAB, TBA, we don't know, and we are resolving TBA into components, and we are told that the horizontal is 0 0.3 and the vertical is 0 0.6. So in terms of distances, we can write a ratio. We can say that the horizontal side, FS, we have Zero point six. We have zero point six, so we can call it. We can call it T B A Y. So this one is for Y. So the vertical component we have put that the distance from this point to that point is six. And then we can also get f of x for TBY, which is 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is to TBAX. So from here, we can write for this and that. So we can say that TBAY over TBAX will be equal to the distance on the vertical over the distance on the horizontal. So the distance on the vertical is this, and the distance on the horizontal is this, which will give us 0 0.6 over 0 0.3. So from here, we can see that TBAY will be equal to 0 0.6 over 0 0.3 times TBAX. Good. So it means that here, now, we can decide to take moment at point C. Don't forget that we said that you always take moment at a point which will eliminate most of the forces. So here we can decide to take moment at point C. Therefore, taking moment at C. At C, we are taking an anti-clockwise to be positive. So sum of moment at C. If you are taking moment at C, this one goes to zero, this one goes to zero. We left this 340. So we are going to get, we are using the scalar approach. So we are going to get this 150. And the perpendicular distance from where it is applied to where we are taking our moment, which will be 0 0.6 plus 0 0.5, which will give us 1.1. But now let's determine whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. The perpendicular distance is this, and our force is applied like this. So you can see that it's going to rotate our orbit in this direction, which will be anti, which will be clockwise, which will be clockwise, and it, will be, it is going to be negative. And then we come to our next force, the 300 there, and the distance, the perpendicular distance from this point where we are taking a moment, that is 0 0.5. You can see that. Perpendicular distance is like this, and the force is applied this way. So it also moves in this direction, which is clockwise, which is going to be negative. And then we have now our 254C. You can see the perpendicular distance from this point where we are taking our moment now is 0 0.6. We are going to get 250 and 0 0.6. But that one, our force, so from the principle of transmissibility, perpendicular distance is this, and this force here can be brought here from the principle of transmissibility, which will be like this. And then now you can see that the rotation is going to be this. With respect to, with respect to where we are taking our moment, is going to rotate our object in this direction. It is also in the clockwise direction. It is also in the clockwise direction. So we are going to get 250 times 0 0.6. And we are saying that that is also going to be in the clockwise direction, which is going to be negative. Two fifty times zero point six 
plus it's now you can see that a horizontal component of the force at from B to A, the AY will be here. The AY will be on the same line of action with the point C. But so it is not going to get any perpendicular distance with respect to where we are taking our moment. So we are not going to get the moment for the Y component for the tension here. But we are going to get the moment for the horizontal component which is going to give us T B A X times 0 0.6 will be equal to zero. And from there, we are going to get negative. But look at that, that one, this force will be going this direction here. S component will be going this direction. Sorry for that. You can see that here our resolved direction will be this. So we said our tension will go this way. So our S component will go this direction, our Y component will go that direction. So our S component will tend to rotate the objects in the clockwise. So if the shape is like this and the force is applied here anti-clockwise, you can see that the object is going to be repeated in this direction, which is anti-clockwise. And that's why we have our BX times 0 0.6 positive. And from there, we are going to get negative 465 plus 0 0.6 A GBAX is equal to zero. And from there, we can get our GB Ax as equal to seven seven five newtons, and don't forget that we said that the ratio for Tax and Tbx is this. You can see that Tbay will be equal to zero point six over zero point three and seven seven five, and from there you can see that Tbay will be equal to. One five five zero newtons, and the question said that we should find the tension in the rope, the tension in this rope, and we know that this rope is made up of TBAY and TBAX and TBAY. It means that the tension in the rope will be equal to the square root of this square plus that square, which will give us seven seven five square plus one five one five five zero square and from there t will be equal to one seven three three newtons and then we can also get for now that you have gotten this we can determine the reactions at c the reactions at c by summing all the y components and the S components. You can sum for the S component and the Y components. Don't forget that at C, so at C, you have S components like this, and they have Y component down there. So we can see that. So this is CX and this is CY. From there, we can see that sum of all Fy up is positive, which will be equal to zero. We are going to get negative 300. Look at this force. 300 is pointing down, so it's going to be negative 300. This is also pointing down, so negative 150 times our y component for this rope here. And the y component is also pointing down. So we are going to get negative minus 1550 plus CY. CY is moving up. So that one is going to be positive. It's equal to zero. And from there, you can see that CY will be equal to 2000 newtons. And we can also write the equilibrium equation for X. 
can see that sum of s is equal to zero. And from here, we can see that x, we have one x component here. Look at the direction. It is going in the opposite direction of our x axis. So it's going to be negative. We are going to get negative 775. And then what s component do we have again? We have cx so plus cx is equal to zero. From the cx to be equal to So don't forget, we have left one x component out. We have one x component here, which is 250. So this is plus 250. Look at the direction. Sorry for that. Let me erase this and write it properly again. So we can say that some of forces in the x component will be equal to negative 770, which is the S component for this force here. And then we have this S component going this direction. So it will be positive, positive 250. And then we have the S, CS going in the positive direction like this. So that is going to be positive CX. CX is equal to zero. From the CX to be equal to one zero two five newton we have determined the reactions at c which are cy and cx i have also been able to determine the tension in the group and we have been able to solve the question as simply as that we have any question any contribution or any suggestion you can let us know at the comment section once again we are grateful unto you for staying alive with us on this channel and learning basic mechanics together. We will be happy to see you once again in our next video. For now, for now, thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Once again, have a blessed day. Bye-bye.